हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन चैप्टर थ्री द स्टोरी ऑफ इंडियन डेमोक्रेसी एंड आवर टॉपिक इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली डिबेट्स आ हिस्ट्री इन नाइनटीन गांधी जी रोट एन आर्टिकल इन द हरिजन कॉल्ड द ओनली वे इन विच ही सैड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली अ लॉन कैन प्रोड्यूस अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इंडिजियस टू द कंट्री एंड ट्रूली एंड फुल्ली रिप्रेजेंटिंग द विल ऑफ द पीपल वन बेस्ड ऑन अन एडल्टेटेड अडल्ट फ्रेंचाइज फॉर बोथ मैन एंड वोमेन the popular demand in 1939 for a constituent assembly was after several ups and downs conceded by the imperialist britain in 1945 in july 1946 the election were held in august 1946 the indian national congress expert committee moved a resolution in the constituent assembly this contained the declaration that the india shall be a republic where the declared social economic and political justice will be guaranteed to all the people of india on matters of social justice there were lively debates on whether government functions should be prescribed or the state should be bounded down to them issues debated ranged from right to employment to social security land reforms to property rights to the organization of panchayats here are some snippets from the debates now let us discuss the next point competing interest the constitution and the social change india exists at so many levels the multi religious and multicultural composition of the population which distinct streams of tribal culture is one aspect of the popularity many divides classify the indian people the impact that culture religion and the caste have on the urban ruler divide rich poor divide and the literate illiterate divide is varied deeply stratified by caste and poverty there are groupings and subgroupings among the ruler poor the urban working class comprises a very wide range then there is a well organized domestic business class as also the professional and commercial class the urban professional class is a highly vocal competing interest operate on the indian social scene and clamor for control of the state's resources however there are some basic objectives laid down in the constitution and which are generally agreed in the indian political world as being obviously just these would be empowerment of the poor and marginalized poverty alleviation ending of caste and positive steps to treat all groups equally competing interest do not always reflect a clear class divide take the issue of the close down of a factory because it emits toxic waste and affects the health of those around this is a matter of life which the constitution protects the flip side is that the closer will render people jobless livelihood again is a matter of life that the constitution protects it is interesting that at the time of drawing up constitution the constituent assembly was fully aware of this complexity and polarity but was intent on securing social justice as a guarantee 
Now the next point is constitutional norms and social justice interpretation to aid social justice. It is useful to understand that there is a difference between law and justice. The essence of law is its force. Law is law because it carries the means to coerce or force obedience. The power of the state is behind it. The essence of justice is fairness. Any system of laws functions through a hierarchy of authorities. The basic norm from which all other rules and authorities flow is called the constitution. It is a document that constitutes a nation's tenets. The Indian constitution is India's basic norm. All other laws are made as per the procedures the constitution prescribes. These laws are made and implemented by the authorities specified by the constitution. A hierarchy of courts which too are authorized created by the constitution interpret the laws when there is a dispute. The Supreme Court is the highest court and the ultimate interpreter of the constitution. The Supreme Court has enhanced the substance of fundamental rights in the constitution in many important ways. The constitution is not just a ready reference of do's and don'ts for social justice. It has the potential for the meaning of social justice to be extended. Social movements have also aided the courts and authorities to interpret the contents of rights and principles in keeping with the contemporary understanding on social justice. Law and courts are sites where competing views are debated. The constitution remains a means to channelize and civilize political power towards social welfare. You will realize that the constitution has the capacity to help people because it is based on basic norms of social justice. For instance, the directive principle on village panchayats was moved as an amendment in the Constituent Assembly by K. Satnam. After 40 odd years, it became a constitutional imperative after the 73rd Amendment in 1992. You shall be dealing with this in next section here let let us wind up the session and thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self-learning podcast